President Muhammad Buhari approves restoration of old 200 Naira notes as legal tender till April 10th. Kogi State Governor gets commendation of the state chapter of the Nigeria Union of Journalists. Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board extends 2023 UTME registration by one week. Elderly in China protests over slashed health benefits. This is the MLC TV Global News, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the confluent state of Nigeria. I am Joshua Adenoye. Thanks for joining us. President Muhammad Buhari has departed Abuja for Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, to participate in the 36th Ordinary Session of the Assembly of the African Union. The theme of the AU Summit is Acceleration of the African Continental Free Trade Area Implementation. Buhari will participate in three high-level meetings on peace and security, climate change, and the political situation in some West African countries. Second is the meeting of the Committee of the Heads of State and Government on Climate Change, currently chaired by the President of Niger Republic. On the margins of the annual meeting of the AU, Buhari will also attend an extraordinary summit of the authority of heads of state and the government of ECOWAS. The Nigerian leader will deliver remarks at the events and as well present his national statement at the opening session of the summit, which brings together leaders from the AU member country and a number of non-AU countries and international institutions accredited to the AU in Addis Ababa. Buhari, who was accompanied on the trip by some ministers and other top government officials, will return to Abuja on Monday, February 28th. President Muhammad Buhari has approved the restoration of the old 200 Naira notes as legal tender. He made the announcement in a national broadcast on Thursday morning. He approved that the old 200 Naira note be allowed along with the new 200 Naira notes for 60 days from February 10th to April 10th when the old 200 Naira note ceases to be legal tender. However, the old 500 and 1000 Naira note remain redeemable at any central bank of Nigeria branch. The president also asked CBN to make the new notes available for Nigerians. Meanwhile, Kaduna State Governor Nasir Erufai has directed the people of the state to continue to accept the old 500, 1,000 and 200 Naira notes as legal tender. During a campaign in the state, Erufai in a viral video, while speaking his Hausa language, said the refuser of the old note will crumble their businesses. Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello has assured that his administration will continue to deliver until his last day in office. The governor gave the assurance during the 2023 symposium of the Kogi State chapter of the Nigeria Union of Journalists, NUJ, with the theme, A Peep into Governor Yahya Bello's seven years in office and implication for future administrations held at the Egg Drive Hotel, Lokoja. In the entourage of the governor, where the state secretary to the government, Dr. Fola Shade Ayoade, chief of staff to the governor, pharmacist Abdul Karim Mohamed Jamil Asuku, commissioners, media aides, and other top government functionaries, including the national president of the NUJ, Chris Isiguzo. Our reporter has the detail. At the symposium were members of the PEN professionals who commended the leadership style of Governor Yahya Bello, who they say has continued to carry journalists along in everything his administration is doing, hence urging him to do more. The chairman, Momojimo Adeza, gave the commendation on behalf of the state journalist. Governor Bello's intervention has since restored seamless, peaceful academic calendar to the Prince of Bakaobi University, Aimba. It is no longer four-year course for six, six or seven years. It is four-year course for four years, for which reason students from within and outside Kogi State now throng the institution to the happiness and fulfillment of their parents. Another reason for my verdict is that Bellos modest schools 
which he has also built across the various and trial districts. Today, the schools have become a source of joy for the people of the state. The school, well built, well equipped, secured, and beautiful. The project is one of the good legacies of this government. The new university conference, University of Science and Technology of Sahara, promises to be an architectural masterpiece of a citadel of learning. The university comes with pluses. Our students, who usually suffered infertility, traveling far and wide in the past and looking for elusive university admissions, are now believed. Also, the governor is beholden to me for his widely acknowledged achievement in the area of health. Apart from the many cottage and general hospitals, he has upgraded, renovated and built across the three central districts. The state specialist hospital is now reconstructed and standing like an imposing edifice that can be compared to any specialist medical facility anywhere in the country. And the best of them all is the newly built reference hospital, Okine. Even the most ardent critic of Belus government will agree that the Okine medical facility is an excellent score for the governor. He equally called on the EFCC to desist from its harassment of the state government without due procedure. No government can finish the job of the state in its tenor. No matter your achievements, your predecessor will have more work to do for the people. But one thing is clear, the next administration after this, after this may not have to repeat what the governor has achieved again. May I use this opportunity to call on the federal government to please call the EFCC to order and stay within the precinct of the law in the discharge of this assignment. The fixation of the agency of Kogi State Government and some individuals in the state is making mockery of the agency's mandate of fighting corruption in Nigeria. People are beginning to believe that the motive of the agency's operation in Kogi State is that of witch hunt and political vendetta. This destruction is not only unnecessary, but also aimed at putting the development in the state to anti-clockwise movement. The chairman's commendations were re-echoed by the national president, Nigerian Union of Journalists, Chris Isiguzo. Isiguzo said Governor Bello's giant stride on health, education, security and many more could not be overemphasized, saying he has done well. Most people tend to misinterpret, misunderstand the function of the press, of the media. Some people see it from the perspective of antagonism. Some people see journalists from the perspective of people who are more concerned with pulling down administration. When the Constitution in Section 22, Chapter 1, entrusted the responsibility of holding government accountable. He did not ask journalists to destroy governments. Holding accountable means ensuring there is accountability, there is transparency, there is probity in governance. There is the sum total of good governance. And that means when a government has done well, it is also the responsibility of the media to say so. And what we've come this morning to witness, to listen to, is a government that has done well. Borrowing a leaf from our chairman, the governor of Kogi NUJ, he declared in one of the lines he read, that the governor has done so well. And I want to align with him. The governor of Kogi State has indeed done well. I always talk about a particular project this administration has completed. It has become a reference point in the delivery of democracy dividends 
across Nigeria. And that is the reference hospital. We have governors, and when I speak like this, you must know that I speak from the standpoint of reality. We have governors in our country who instead of bringing such an edifice to the state, would rather go to Australia, go to United Kingdom. Honorable Kingsley Fanwell took time to list other countries in Africa. They would rather go to those places and build such facilities. But for the governor of Kogi State, he felt the need to address the health care issues facing the people of Kogi State, who have reposed their confidence in him. And that's why he brought such a reference hospital that has become a reference point. We must have to applaud the administration. <laughs> even the blind, even though earlier speakers have captured the flyover, I always passed through Lokoja for several years before I became president. Today, at that point, even the blind can attest to the fact that now there is government in Kogi State. On the call by the state chairman Momojimo Adeiza to the EFCC and journalist Modesty on Delivery, the national president approved the recommendation, adding that it's good to praise if a leader is doing well and vice versa. Even the blind can attest to the fact that now there is government in Kogi State. And we want to again applaud the administration. Because democracy is about making impact on the living standard of the people. Any democracy that does not impact positively on the people is not democracy. By the steps taken by the present administration in, the, in Kogi State, indeed, you can see a government and administration that is people-centered. And that is what democracy is all about. Without taking the assignment of the lead speaker away from him, I want to signpost the fact that what Kogi AUJ has put together has the total endorsement of the National Secretariat of the AUJ. And the text he has read for us also has the endorsement, tacit endorsement, of my humble self and by extension, the national leadership of our great union. At a time like this, it will be a disservice if I handle the microphone, I don't address very critical issues facing us as a people at this critical point in time. Without pondering to the whims and caprices of political actors, this is yet another moment that history will record us for good or for bad. If we step out there, pick our pens and our phones and write what will continue to enthrone discipline, good governance, unity, and peace in our country. I therefore want to advise you, when you pick up that your pen, if what you are writing is not going to pull people out of squalor, what you are writing, if it will not pull people out of poverty, what you are writing, if it will not pull people out of ignorance, please drop your pain. You are not writing for Nigeria. As you step out on the 25th and on the 11th of March to report the elections, please bear in mind that there is only one country we will call our own, and that is Nigeria. Don't become another oil that will fuel or add or uh, 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 you know, blow out of proportion and already inflame the situation. The country is charged. There is tension. There is fear around and across the country. Please don't add to it. Report what will engender peace building, Report what will banish acrimony and rancor and rather enthrone peace in Nigeria. It's very, very important. The discussants who were selected across the education, finance and security sectors 
took time to inform the audience of what the government has done, what is doing, and what the future holds for the people of the state. Because of the fact that he was so committed to the maximum step, he devoted, he approved the, the allocation of 30% of the state's annual budget to education alone. 30% of the annual budget is 4% higher than the UNESCO recommendation of 26%. So, we had more than enough money to spend, which is why you find the GYB model colleges springing all over the state. Conference University of Science and Technology of Sahara has the shortest gestation period of all universities in this country. And I'm not too sure whether any other university will ever have that block, because this is a university that was signed into law, established by law, signed into law by His Excellency, the Executive Governor of the State, on 21st August 2020. And by December, management had already been appointed for the university. And um, just like uh, it has been observed by other speakers, um, the COVID, the COVID-19, which was uh, supposed to be um, a bad omen for the nation happened to be a very good one for us because it was that COVID that delayed admission for 1920 and uh, we took advantage of that COVID and quickly entered into academic activities for the session of 2019-2020 academic session. Thanks of course to His Excellency. And um, the Conference of National Science and Technology, I must also establish, wasn't created for cosmetic reasons. No. It was created for the purpose of enhancing STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. What has happened in College of Health Sciences and Technology today, when I see His Excellency, I see strongest political will. When I look at His Excellency, I see focus, I see result-orientedness. The institution that I am heading today was more or less like a glorified secondary school when I took over in 2016. But today is on the news everywhere. As a result of the Association of Provost Colleges of Health Sciences and Technology of Nigeria, gave me a letter of commendation. They also gave His Excellency a letter of commendation. In my own commendation letter, they copied him that they have seen noticeable change, development in College of Health Sciences and Technology today. For his vision to ensure that he bequeaths qualitative education to students, I came on board with his support the NUC um, captured the title of the result of the 2021 accreditation by saying, for this state university and 25 others have full accreditation of all programs of offer. With that, we have been able to build on that to establish other institutions. I mean, other uh, academic programs, including the nursing program, and medical science laboratory program, and the pharmacology program. Secondly, in the area of health, he worked to build in Ayanga a teaching hospital. He constructed a well-equipped teaching hospital in Ayanga. With that, we can now commence the MBBS program that has been stalled since 2012. On security, I can also attest to that. I came on board when rival court groups on campus killed and maimed academic staff. One of such staff just resumed last week after the gunshot he sustained in 2019. And I can say that now on campus, since coming on board, you are a female, the first female vice chancellor. We've not had a single gunshot on campus because 
of the security he has provided within and around the university? And we will see from 2007 to 2015, what we had was not what anybody should wait for, a state. The policy of demolitions of houses, the whistleblowing policy, the inclusiveness of people. So not because we are providing security for the people. We brought them in and we integrated them into the system. I will not go into Celestia like the guest speaker to tell you today that Kogi State is not only the most safe state in the North Central, but one of the safest in Nigeria. Because the current is happening in Nigeria right today, right now, we have houses, uh, banks, in Bogus, here and there. Since two weeks ago, the government has started it to ensure we don't have that crisis in Kogi. You don't only think about deployment, you think about the logistics. And security going to technology level in which it does the human being only need to sit and monitor what is happening. We have one of the highest and best technical deployment in security of in part of security in Nigeria today. Mr. President was in, in Kogi. He commissioned about eight projects. One of the projects that is not allowed are security gadgets. And they are not allowed because people are enjoying, already enjoying security. Those security gadget commission, you cannot find it in any state in Nigeria. When you are trying to build any system, the people matter and also the technology and the service you are giving out. Governor Yabilo, before now, before becoming the governor of Kogi State, is a chartered accountant, a fellow of the institute. So that alone is a yardstick to push the people in the finance section to work harder because your principal know what you are doing and you know where you are going, and you know where you are coming from. So therefore, at the beginning, it just advise us to ensure that we have sound fiscal sustainability plan. For you to have a sound fiscal sustainability plan, in essence, it's just telling us, check what do we need, what do we need, and whatever we are going to do, Let's ensure we spend money minimally. And when you are doing it, ensure there is value for money. And when we sat down, he did not just say that he knows it all, no fully that is from the civil service. He equally encouraged ourselves and our staff, which are the people, to be trained. We have them trained in Nigeria, and we have some of them trained abroad. The state has received a lot of awards in terms of transparency and accountability. From the World Bank, sometimes commendation from the Akata General of the Federation, and sometimes from the Ministry of Finance. Secondly, we have to also ensure that we improve our public revenue. How do we improve our public revenue? Ensuring that the people also participate in developing the state by paying their taxes at the right time, and at the same time, don't overburden them make the tax effective and efficient for the benefit of the people. As at the start of this government, we have 300 million, 350, but with the reform in place, ensuring that the people receive correct uh, service, and ensuring that those who are to work in the, in, in the tax uh, KGRS, they are working in a good environment, ensuring their technology. As at today, as at the last count, what we generated as IGR is 3.6 billion. If you look at the mathematics, it is over 1,000 percent. Whereas we started at 350, but now January we are able to click 3.6 billion.
the guest speaker Emmanuel Okoliko, appraised Kogi Governor for doing so much, called for continued support to enjoy more dividends of democracy, even as the people look forward to electing another governor in no distance time. It is important to say that Ayabelo became governor and more history and more history came to play. The idea that you shouldn't be too young to run had been there, but it got energy. It got revived because Yahya Bello became governor of Kogi State. At 40, he became Nigeria's youngest democratically elected governor. Clearly, no guy in his age and at that time, to dare, even before him, to dare to face the devil. But he came, he saw, he conquered, and what I can see and tell you there from my people experience is a man who is laden with high level, massive political dexterity, a man of focus, a man with vision, a man with administrative doggedness, capacity, and high level of intelligence. It was just a description of the man I saw when I beat. The moral lesson, the moral knowledge I want to throw is that everyone wants to be at the top, of course. So those who succeed in doing so are applauded, unfortunately. Not everyone who reached the top was able to stay there. A big accomplishment is winning an election in the first place or becoming a governor. But you know that an even better accomplishment is effectively governing. Being elected governor may depend on luck, chance, or some sort of natural occurrence. But delivering the goods of governance is a different story that requires capacity. The media-friendly governor Yahya Bello could not but express his feelings, promised his administration will serve the good people of Kogi until the last minutes of his tenure in office. When we came to Kogi State, we saw the problem. We tried as much as possible to derive the formula without making noise. We derived the formula, we applied it, hence the various achievements we have seen so far. And of course, the next administration, riding on the formula we have derived, will be able to solve the problem of the future. And this renewed marriage between Kogi State Government and NUG will be sustained. And by the special grace of God, we are going to leave our name in the sand of time. Governor Bello commended the national body of the NUJ and the president, Isi Guzo, urged broadcasters to report accurate news that will not jeopardize the peace of the nation. We are in a political season. And I want to urge each and every one of us to play by the rules. Let's play by the rules. Let me use this opportunity to appeal to all Nigerians that we should not fall into the trap of some few individuals who want to plunge this country into chaos. Election will hold. Thank God Mr. President in his broadcast today assured Nigerians that there will be election, that every Nigerian will be secured let us ensure that what we are enjoying today, even though it may not be adequate, we may not have had everything we want, let us not destroy the modest achievements we have recorded under this democracy in this fourth republic. We should not, by our own action, truncate this republic. Let us remain calm. The situation is just temporary. In a few days to come, by the special grace of God, we're going to have a new president-elect and other elective positions shall be occupied in a few days to come. The situation will stabilize. It is normal that when end time of an administration or an era comes, you should have this kind of little skirmishes. But let us not blow it out of proportion. We should remain calm. We should remain resolute as a people. 
and ensure that we go into this election. And of course, I will be selfish at this point. That this next election, by the special grace of God, our own leader, our father, the Jagaban of the universe, Ashwa Jumbola Ahmed Kunubu, will be elected the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Let's not make me mistake. He has done it before in Lagos. He's going to do it again. He will do it in Nigeria, and Nigeria is going to be the pride of Africa once again. The NUJ Symposium tagged a peep into Governor Yahya Bello's seven years in office and implications for future administrations marked the 2023 Annual Congress of the State Chapter. Khadijat Mohammed reporting for MLC TV. The protest of EFCC Bawa Must Go has taken a new turn as thousands of youth joined the call for his remover or go to prison. The protest leaders, Kakol Chairman Debo Adeniro, Zero Graft Center, Kolawole Sanchez Jude, and a host of others promised to continue if Bawa did not obey the law. Uh, what we are doing today is not far or different from what we have been doing since uh, the last eight days. What we are here for is simply to tell the EFCC chairman straight and direct that Nigeria is not a banana republic, that Nigeria is not a place where a law enforcement officer would not obey our law, where people that are public servants would see us, the citizens, and ordinary Nigerians as fools, or they, they, they will see us as someone that are above the law. It is very simple. As EFCC chairman, you have taken so many people to court. You have convicted them. They have obeyed the court order. You have gone to, uh, to, to, they have been sentenced to the prison. Now it is your own turn. You were taken to court, and uh, subsequently, you were, you, the judgment went against you. What we are saying is very simple. Is it that you are resigning, or of course you turn yourself in? Go to the prison. Even if you want to appeal these cases, the first thing you are supposed to do as an individual is first to, you know, obey. Then you can appeal, and subsequently, if the court finds it uh, finds you free, then you go home. So it is not possible for you to do what is good for A is good for B. And we have said it continually that this country. We are. If you want to come to equity, you must come with a very clear hand. The youth representative also kicked against the flagrant disobedience of Bawa to the Nigerian constitution. You cannot continue like this because injury is the one, it's injury is the world. Nobody is above the law. What is happening in this country, a country that is over 250 million people, and someone that represents the interests of the people, that is safeguard the interests of the people, that is, you know, that is totally in charge of the crime and law. And I must tell you, if such person was found guilty of anything, without any delay, even I went to call on Mr. President, President Muhammad Bari, to, to direct Bawa to resign without any delay, because someone that you know want to you know, uh, arrest a crime, a criminal, cannot even be indicted for same criminal. And with that person to continue that office is a major problem. So it's a major embargo, it's a major problem so to our people. The president. Coalition of Yoruba Youth Council, Abe Emmanuel Kolawole, said he has also joined the struggle, having studied the mode of operation of the EFCC since Bawa took over office. He noted that considering the disgrace meted on the former EFCC boss, Ibrahim Magu, to bring Bawa on board, it was glaring after a while that Bawa was allegedly planted to use EFCC as a tool for political vendetta rather than as an instrument of anti-corruption. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board has extended its 2023 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination Registration by one week. The extension began on Wednesday, February 15, 2023. However, the sales of E-PINs will end on February 28, 2023. While the UTME registration ends on Wednesday, February 22, 2023. The Head of Public Affairs and Protocol, JAMB, Dr. Fabian Benjamin, disclosed this in a statement in Abuja. He said that at the close of the sale of the EPIN on Tuesday, 14th February 2023, 1,527,068 candidates had successfully registered for the 2023 UTME exercise, inclusive of 168,748 who indicated their interest to take the mock UTME. 
he added that a total of 1,527,068 candidates had successfully registered for the 2023 UTME exercise. Ogun State Government has upgraded its College of Health Technology in Elisha, Ijebu, to a polytechnic and would henceforth be known as Ogun State Polytechnic of Health and Allied Sciences. With a promise to appoint a substantive rector for the institution soon, the State Governor, Prince Dapo Abiodun, made the pronouncement during his re-election campaign tour of Ijebu Northeast Local Government. Governor Abiodun said upgrading the institution has become imperative because of the plans to reposition the school and expand its curriculum. During his engagement with the student, Abiodun emphasized that he has only done what the law empowered him to do, as he is the only one that can make such pronouncement. The governor also promised that his administration would continue to support the development of education in the state while assuring the student that those yet to receive their bursary would soon get it. The APC flag bearer further noted that his administration would continue to cater for the welfare of students in the state, assuring that his administration will begin immediate repair on the internal roads of the institution. Commercial activities were paralyzed in various parts of the country as protesters took to the streets, barricading roads in protest against the hardship occasioned by cash scarcity and high cost of premium motor spirit. In Bini, the Edo State capital, residents barricaded the ever-busy Ubowo Lagos Expressway and other major roads in the state capital to protest scarcity of the new Nera notes. The incident is coming weeks after a similar protest robbed the city where residents marched against fear scarcity and price hike which led to setting up of a special patrol monitoring committee by Edo State government. The protest resulted in gridlock in Ubowo area near the University of Bini, King Square, popularly called Ring Road, and other link roads, and left motorists and other road users stranded. Commuters plying the Ubowo Lagos Expressway, which is a major federal road that connects Bini City to the south south and southeast routes, had a hectic time gaining access to their destinations. Angry customers also set on fire Access Bank in Wari, Delta State, to protest their frustration against cash scarcity and the refusal of the commercial banks to accept the old notes. The customers, which are majorly youths in Udurud axis of the town, also towed some vehicles, disrupted vehicular movement, and destroyed valuable property in the area. Meanwhile, the governor of Delta State and vice presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Dr. Ifani Okowa, has reacted swiftly and appealed to the angry customers and other Nigerians in the state to remain calm. With a few days to the February 25th presidential election, Governor Yinsin Wike of River State has ruled out any last-minute deal or truce between the G5 governors and the flag bearer of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar. Wike also said he is not ready to sit with any member of the Atiku camp to break peace between the G5 governors or the integrity group and the national leadership of the party led by Iyocha Ayu. Wike in a media chat also said he owed nobody an apology to have hosted the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, in Port Harcourt after the latter's rally in the state. The G5 is made up of five aggrieved governors of the PDP in southern Nigeria, including Wike, Samuel Autumn of Benue, Shei Makinde of Oyo, Okezie Ipazu of Abia, and Ifani Ugwai of Enugu. The five governors have been consistent in their demand that IU step down as PDP national chairman as a precondition for them to support the 2023 presidential candidate of the party, Atiku Abubakar. The G5 has been quiet of late, but Wiki said the group is not dead. 
According to him, the group has its own strategies and not all of them will do the talking, adding that the quietness of others does not mean they are not together. We go on a short break. We'll be right back. Opinion, the say, is the lowest of human knowledge. But the world, the people, the actions, reactions and decisions are often patterned with opinions. The same world is characterized by different views and decisions are sometimes judged by actions or reactions due to opinions. People, nations and even lower animals rise against or for one another just because of their opinions. Minds are set on opinions daily. Tell me what you don't know and I will tell you. It's all about your opinion. Join me, Joshua Atinoi, on Malakite TV Online every Monday by 9 a.m. Your opinion, my opinion, if well explained and understood, will help us to build a better society. Your opinion, my opinion counts. Don't miss it. Welcome back. And on the foreign scene, crowds of retirees in China have again taken to the streets to protest against the cuts of their medical benefits. They gathered for a second time in Wuhan, where the deadly COVID-19 was first detected, and also in the northeastern city of Dalian. The second round of protests in seven days put pressure on President Jinping's administration just weeks before the annual National People's Congress, which will usher in a new leadership team. The protest first took place in Wuhan on 8th February after provincial authorities said they were cutting the level of medical expenses which retirees can claim back from the government. Although such health insurance matters are handled at the provincial level, but the protests have spread to different parts of the country in what appears to be a renewed belief in the power of demonstration in China. The changes to health benefit for retirees, which officials have described as reforms, come just as China emerges from the brutal COVID-19 wave. A role within the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, the largest religious group in the country, has been resolved after a group of breakaway clergy held discussion with the representatives from the main church. A statement from the church's leadership explained that senior government officials, including Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, participated in the talks alongside elders appointed to reconcile the rival groups. The Synod, the church's leadership, had previously accused the authorities of supporting the breakaway clergy, who are mostly from the Oromia region, where Prime Minister Abiy hails from. The row began when the breakaway archbishops appointed dozens of bishops without the knowledge of the church, accusing the synod of lacking diversity and failing to reach the faithful in their native language. The breakaway clergy have now submitted a letter of apology to the synod and they are expected to be welcomed back. And that is the size of our package for today. If you like what we are doing, do support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Malakite TV. Like and follow our Facebook page, MLC TV and MLC TV2. Instagram, MLC TV2021. Twitter at MLC TV1. For your event coverage, appearance on any of our programs, contributions, comment, Advert placement or sponsorship, please or send SMS to any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join Malakite TV online on weekends to watch our various programs. Saturday 7 p.m. Political Arena, Sunday 6 p.m. Women's World, and Monday 9 a.m. The Opinion. It's Malakite TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Endeavor to go out and cast your vote for your chosen candidate on the 25th of February and March 11th, 2023. Remember, your vote is your power. Don't waste it. Please, be your brother's keeper to build a happier and better society together. I am Joshua Adenoye. 
Thanks for watching.